What is going on investors back again time to take a look at another retailer today We're gonna take a look at Home Depot company ticker symbol HD as you can see I got the max chart here on Yahoo This stock has been going up a mountain and we're way up here at all-time highs We've got a 306 billion dollar market cap. We've got a P ratio of 28, which is look that's actually fairly reasonable So it's showing you before we even jump into the earnings that were reported today We'll take a look at the stock chart you know that they're growing revenue very quickly. They're growing sales and more importantly here in the earnings ratio, they're growing earnings very quickly because when your stock goes up this quickly, the PE ratio can get out of whack very quickly. And so Home Depot is growing earnings. They're growing sales. The other thing they've got is a pretty nice dividend at 2%. Okay, still 2%. Again, you know, counting in that we've got a rocket ship of a move here in the stock. They're paying $6 per share in a dividend but again we are at basically 52 week highs very close and we're basically very close to an all-time high in Home Depot now they reported earnings today let's jump right into them and take a look so we've got net sales here on the top line we've got our three months ended here August 4th August 2nd here over the last uh, you know year over year period and then we've got a six month year over year period as well take a look at this growth guys 23% growth in the quarter. Okay, this isn't Christmas time. This isn't, uh, you know, a company that's opening a ton of doors and build. This is just phenomenal growth. Okay, obviously we know a lot of it's due to the virus and things like that. People spending on their homes, people uh, not necessarily selling their home. They're doing additions that, you know, there's a lot of that going on. It obviously got accelerated during the quarter and it, it's accelerated even more. It seems like even the further away we've gotten from kind of of when things really got impacted here in March in the United States. So we went from $31 billion in sales all the way up to $38 billion in sales. That's absolutely phenomenal. Now, the first thing I want you to realize as an investor is that this time next year, Home Depot is going to have a heck of a time trying to beat this comp number. Okay, obviously, maybe the longer things play out, it might benefit them. But let's say we get a vaccine. People, instead of, you know, building a home addition, they just move. Or instead of doing that, they go on vacation or they buy a boat or something like that. You see what I'm saying? So they're going to have trouble. So management over, I bet the next six months, six to 12 months is tr going to try to tamp down expectations on achieving 23% growth quarter over quarter. Not saying that they can't do it, but that could create some headwinds going into the future quarters, which again, if you're trying to go long Home Depot, you actually want the shares to pull back a little bit. In my opinion, I don't, if you want to buy it at an all time high, go right ahead. I don't like doing that. So maybe some headwinds are created because they have such strong comp numbers year over year. It could make next year's numbers look a, a worse than they are because this quarter is just so phenomenal. Now, now, for the six month ended, we see we still have really strong growth at 15.9%. We went from 57 billion up to $66 billion in revenue. That's absolutely phenomenal. Now, cost of sales, it's a relative, like any brick and mortar retail, it's a relatively low margin business. I wouldn't say like every brick and mortar retail, but these large big box stores run on a slightly lower gross margin than you see, obviously, with a software company or a tech company or like that. But it's still ticked up nicely in the quarter, 24%. We see sales grew 23%. I love seeing this. Okay. Sales grew 23%. Our gross profit grew almost the same. In fact, it increased a little bit too. And you see that here on the six month, we grew 15.9% on the top line. And then our gross number grew almost identical number. You love to see that. It means even in this difficult environment with the protecting the employees, cleaning stores, you know, store hours, maybe potentially being reduced as well. They're still driving that gross profit. You love to see that now from an operating perspective, they're still driving some nice efficiencies here. We do see some costs tick up in the quarter for the selling and general administrative side, but it's somewhat in line with where we're growing sales as well. And obviously gross profit as well. Now, depreciating amortization, that's non-cash and that's a, a relatively low number. Now, total operating income, Super nice. We take a look at this. We grew our sales up here. Operating income grew almost identical. A little bit less down here on the six month. It just shows you 
how phenomenal this quarter was for Home Depot. That's what has me, I don't want to say it has me concerned, but it actually has me excited for this time next year. If Home Depot has trouble beating these comps, it could create a buying opportunity in the stock. I know I'm giving you like advice like 12 months out, but great investors kind of start looking for these things now. They put it in their memory bank and this time next year, they start to plan for that type of things. Now, coming down here to net income, we grew 24%. Again, that's so in line with everything. Everything is just lining up. Man, the executives on this team are doing a great job for the six, at least in this current quarter. The six months, not as great. I mean, it's still great. I'm not telling you this is bad, but it, it, this quarter is just maybe one of the best I've ever seen. It's probably the best I've ever seen for Home Depot. The six month paints a little bit more, uh, you know, reasonable picture. And I think going forward, it's more like what you're going to see out of Home Depot. You're going to see a uh, top line, maybe grow in the 15 range. You're going to see operating income grow in the in maybe right in that 10 range and then net income right around that same period and obviously if you're experiencing that kind of growth it's phenomenal if they can keep up this 24 percent look 200 dollars 285 dollars a share whatever it is right now is mega cheap if they can keep having quarters like this i just don't see that potentially happening now for the six month i told you about the dividend so six month ended right here we made six dollars and 13 cents per share if you don't know how to like factor in earnings per share with a dividend. Well, they pay $6 per year for each share. So they have plenty of coverage on this dividend. I know we just had a great quarter where we made $4 a share. We almost made the whole dividend payment just in this quarter, but you see a more normal quarter, you're closer to $3 per share. If things can keep up like this, well, look what, they're probably going to be able to raise that dividend in the future quarters. Now, another interesting thing is the select sales data here. We see customer transactions ticked up about 12%. We see average ticket ticked up about 10%. Yeah, that's it makes sense. Every time I go to Home Depot, I spend about 75 to 100 bucks. And then finally, sales per retail square foot. This is a really interesting number because you can kind of factor in what they're paying per square foot for their, their buildings and their boxes. Well, they make, look at this, $630 a square foot. I guarantee you they're not paying anywhere close to that in rent. And then when even when you factor in all the employees and things to operate that thing, it's super, super impressive number. Now, from the asset side, this has really caught my attention here. We've got this cash cash and cash equivalents. I know they just had a great quarter. So it'll be interesting to see if this came from operations or if they did some kind of debt raise. So we see February here, we see August here. So we've got a year over year and then we've kind of got, uh, I guess that would be almost quarter over quarter. That's a six month out something. That's a six month out view here. We went from 2 billion to 2.5. You, it looks like to me, they carried about $2 billion in cash. Well, that boom, it jumped up to 14 billion. So I'm wondering if that came from operation or where the heck that came from. We we see that pretty much lines up to what we have in these total assets. Most of it got added here in this cash merchandise inventory staying relatively fat. In fact, it's down a little bit as well. That's probably a positive sign in my opinion. And it probably has to do with supply chains as well. Those have really tightened up. Now let's come down here. Short-term debt. We don't have any in the quarter. Long-term debt. That's kind of what I want to see down here. Long-term debt right here. Okay. So we jumped up 12 billion billion just over the last year and we jumped up about 14 over the last six months so that's where a lot of this cash is coming from so i was curious if this was all coming from operations hallelujah that would be amazing um but no they did raise some money in this long-term debt here and, and they probably refinanced a little bit let's take a look at the cash flows cash flows are phenomenal we went from 8.5 up to 15 that's phenomenal they don't they actually don't uh, erase a lot of stuff here so we've got changes in working capital here in depreciation and amortization. So that's phenomenal cash flows as well. Most of it is due to kind of this change right here in the changes in working capital as well. Capital expenditures came, like came in flat year over year. Is that what we're looking at here? Yeah, year over year for a six month view. Now from a debt raise, so we here's our proceeds from long term debt right here. So we went from 1.5 almost up to about five, and so there's some of that long term debt, although it's not as much. So some of the cash from the operations and cash flows actually did flow to the bottom line. It appears because we actually had cash leave the business on this financing side, although it's less than previous uh the previous period so we have cash dividends here as well we see that grew that's nicely we've got repurchase of stock they actually did more in the previous period than this period i think that's good when you look at this chart uh do you really want to be buying back stock 
at the all-time highs? I don't think so. Take your cue from Home Depot. Notice how much they were buying in the previous six months, which was probably somewhere down in this range. It's still pretty high, okay? But they were doing much more buying in the previous period when the stock was a lot lower, and they're actually doing a little bit less now. So we have cash and cash equivalents at the period. Again, that went up huge. And so change in cash equivalents up $12 billion. A lot of it actually came from the cash flow, a little bit from a debt raise as well. Now, finally, let's jump into the stock chart. This thing has been on an elevator ride and it is skipping all the floors and it is just going up, but it's been a pretty steady rise. You see these candles. There's not actually a lot of big like gap ups and th there's not a lot. This has just been a steady like walk up the ladder here. And so this stock has been in this range and you see it's traded above it and it's up. I don't necessarily see any reason for this thing to stop. Uh, if you want to come in here and buy shares, I mean, that's on you. You can do that. You might be able to do it through an ETF as well. Well, if you don't want, you know, you don't want to come and get direct exposure to Home Depot, you don't want to maybe pay a high multiple. Maybe you come in there and you can do it in an ETF. That's up to you. Um, but personally, I would wait. The, the first level I see where I'd like this one is at at 250. I know I'm going to have like 10 people in the comments be like, you're crazy. But uh, look, the stock just a couple months ago was at 140. And so you think I'm crazy to, to want to maybe try to get it at 250. That would be the first level where I'd be really excited about jumping in here. Now, now, the thing I'm going to do is Home Depot's been on my watch list. I've never been able to get it, but I think maybe, maybe next year you're going to have some tough comps. It's going to be a tough number to beat next year. And so potentially, potentially as we get the like comeback trade, so the airlines, the other retailers that have been struggling, the vacation stocks, the hotels, the cruise lines. Uh, all those stocks, I think, make a comeback at some point. When it is, I have no idea. I'm not really trying to bet on when that is. But when that is, maybe people slow their spending on Home Depot. And instead of 23% growth, we get a much more a lower number. And in fact, I could definitely see this time next year, they could actually have negative. Home Depot could report negative comp sales. So that is possible because this is such a blowout number. And now if management and the street doesn't do a good job explaining that to Wall Street and then to investors, then you could have a knee jerk reaction in the stock and it could come down. And that's when I like to buy stocks when there's this kind of knee jerk reaction. So I know I'm giving you like advice 12 months out or kind of giving my thoughts. I'm not really trying to give you advice here. I'm just giving my thoughts 12 months later, but that's the kind of thing a lot of investors, a lot of good investors, at least the ones that I, that mentor me, uh, talk to me about. And so that's what I'm seeing here with Home Depot. Phenomenal company. If you own it, I would hold it. If you want to get in, I really don't think there's a bad spot to get in here. You're not paying a huge premium from an earnings basis and those are growing and you actually are getting a relatively healthy dividend. I just wouldn't open up a full position. If you have like 2000, let's say $3,000 dollars in Home Depot. You know, I wouldn't open up a full position where you bought whatever that would be 10 or 11 shares of this. I would maybe do a 20% of that to begin with and then see if this stock can kind of pull back a little bit. Again, as those stocks that are out of favor come back in favor, I think stocks like Home Depot that have had a monster run might flatten out a little bit, might pull back, come back down to earth a little bit and maybe you get a shot there. That's just my opinion on Home Depot. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Maybe consider hitting that like button and that subscribe button. Thank you for everybody. I think we're over 22,000 subscribers here on the channel. A few months ago, I think I had about a thousand. So I just want to thank all of you for that. We'll be back again soon. Good luck with your investments.